doing more as friends and partners is good for both of our countries, for jobs, but it's also good for the world as uh, we can position ourselves as uh, those suppliers of energy and of solutions. There are so many things we do better when we do together. That when we work together, we can grow our economies, we can support our communities, we can create real opportunity, and we can create real freedom in both of our nations. We are doing business with Canada, and Canada knows just how critical Pennsylvania is, and we of course know Canada is our number one trading partner. The Prime Minister is back from a one-day trade blitz in Philadelphia, where he met with Vice President Kamala Harris, and as you saw just there in that clip, State Governor Josh Shapiro. Trudeau is trying to shore up Canada-U.S. trade support with the prospect of another Trump presidency looming large. Here to dig into the prospects for that strategy is David McNaughton, who was Canada's ambassador to the U.S. through NAFTA negotiations with former President Trump. Hi, Mr. McNaughton. Pleasure to have you back on the show. Thanks for making the time. Yeah, no problem at all, guys. We were just looking at some pictures of the prime minister meeting with the governor of Pennsylvania, and I completely understand, obviously, if you're in government, you have to meet with people who hold office. How difficult is the balancing act, in your view, at this juncture of also reaching out to people who might be in office or the people who surround those individuals? Well, I think, uh, you know, you've got to do uh, as much as you can to see anyone. I mean, in an election year, um, you can't just see the people that are in office. You've got to try and see as many people that might be in office, too. I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's understandable. So. And when, when the prospect of doing that, involving people who surround or did surround Trump, is in play, uh, what is your view on how that should unfold or could, could unfold. And I, and I asked because I spoke to the person who took over <laughs> for you, Ambassador uh, Hillman, over the weekend, who mentioned that, you know, often they are taking meetings with people who did used to work around Trump because they might in the future work around him sure. again. But it, there is not a lot of clarity about who might occupy those roles, at least at, at this point. No, I know. But, I mean, you know, obviously somebody like uh, Bob Lighthizer, who was the U.S. US trade representative uh, and who we negotiated with um, during the, the Trump years, he continues to be influential, uh, an influential advisor to Trump. And so, you know, talking to people like that is, is uh, worthwhile, getting their perspective, because there's a fair bit of work being done at the present moment. Uh, by some of those people that uh, either anticipate being in a potential Trump administration or who are, you know, preparing, um, you know, position papers and things like that. So it's, it's worthwhile reaching out to them. The former president has floated the prospect of a 10 percent tariff on imports. That's certainly the policy measure that has garnered the most headlines as far as it relates to the Canadian economy so far. How concerned should the federal government be about the prospect of that? Well, look, I, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's, uh, I, you know, I don't think it's just uh, Donald Trump uh, 2.0 that you've got to worry about. I mean, what, what has happened in the United States um, <clears throat> is that there's been growing protectionism and isolationism. Um, there are far fewer people in Congress that you can reach out to who you would describe as being free traders. Um, and so I think we've got we're going to have our we're going to have our challenges going forward, whether it's, uh, you know, a Donald Trump presidency or whether it's a renewed Joe Biden presidency. I mean, if you look at what Biden's doing uh, in terms of, you know, his election campaign, it's trying to get as many uh, organized labor leaders on side as possible. And so, um, you know, it, it, it isn't going to be easy. What do you think accounts for the growing influence of uh, the ideals associated with protectionism? Like what, what the evolution that you just described, what do you think accounts for it? Well, you know, it, it, the U.S. has gone through various uh, iterations of this before. I mean, you know, back, they, you know, they, they did not get into the First World War until 1917. They didn't get into the Second World War until, you know, uh, until the Pearl Harbor was bombed. There was the Smoot-Hawley Act, uh, you know, in the 1920s. 
Um, so, so these things these things come and go in the U.S. and and I think uh, there is an anxiety about uh, you know globalism and and mistrust of so-called experts and things like that. I think it's all sort of uh, and it's not just in the United States. I think you know it's happening in in Europe. It's happening uh, it's happening all over. I think our our, our concern, obviously, when we have seventy. Six or seventy-seven percent of our exports go to the United States. Um, you know, we obviously have to worry about it. But, but uh, you know, it's um, you know, it's it's it, it it isn't it isn't something that is just all of a sudden mm -hmm. come about. It's been creeping up. I think Donald Trump tapped into that sentiment in two thousand and sixteen, and I think since then it's just um, it's just grown. So. Uh, we have to. We have to be. I, I think what the prime minister is doing at the present moment is the right thing. I think that the, uh, you know, the ministers that are down there a lot. I also think that, uh, you know, Minister Blair, uh, you know, reaching out in terms of the, you know, illustrating how we are prepared and are going to become more and more a reliable defense and security partner is, is worthwhile, too. I mean, we can't just talk about trade with the Americans. We've got to be sensitive to their needs uh, in terms of defense and security. So, um, as I say, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge uh, regardless of who wins the election, just because of the mood of America at the present moment. And when you look, I guess, th ahead through the next six months, uh, you, you reference sort of the strategy being employed right now, the number of ministers that have made trips, for example, to different parts of the United States, as well as yesterday, the, the prime minister. It, it, you know, if they were to ask your advice about what more they should be doing or what else, I guess, they, they, they should be doing, what would you tell them in that, in that period now bet between where we are and the election? Well, I, you know, again, and I, you know, just to re repeat, um, I, I think that what what they are doing is the right thing to do on the on the trade side, which is to emphasize the fact that we are good trading partners. That in fact, there are a lot of American communities, American companies that depend on on trade with Canada. That it's a mutually beneficial relationship, but. There's no doubt whatsoever that you know it's more important to us than it is to them, and so you know we do need to understand as a country, and this isn't just the government. This is as a country, we need to understand that um, you know for them things like defense and security. I mean, those those are the things that are top top of mind to them. You know, migration, uh, illicit drugs. I mean, all these things are, are issues where. Um, as 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 neighbors in North America, we need to demonstrate to the United States that we are reliable partners, and whether that's helping with the NORAD modernization and the defending, um, you know, the Arctic and and the whole range of you know, sort of the the infrastructure uh, of North America that could be under attack, cybersecurity. There are a whole range of these kinds of things where. I think it's just really important for us to continue to demonstrate that we are a reliable partner of the United States of America. Is it, um, and that's going to be that's going to be critical in terms of maintaining our trading relationship. I guess is it fair for me to interpret that as we have to talk about trade, but not just about trade? That's exactly right. I mean, I you know I, I understand why we want to talk about trade. Right. Uh, I used to want to talk about it all the time <laughs> too, and I used to find. That they'd say, well, yeah, it's very interesting. Nice of you to talk about that. Now, can we have a talk about what we'd like to talk about? And and you know that that wasn't always about trade. So um, so we have to be we have to be. It's like any relationship, you know. If you if you're just talking about what you want to talk about, you become um, you know you don't have a strong friendship as a relationship as if you're you know making sure that you're sensitive to their needs too. Right. And I think. I think, as I say, you know, I think Minister Blair is uh, doing some of that, and I think others are doing it, and I think that's uh, extremely important. I'm going to leave it on that note. Thank you so much, Mr. McNaughton. Pleasure to get your insights, as always. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks.